Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Biology Revision video. In this video, I'm just going to go through a couple of common errors and misconceptions from previous MCQ past paper questions, just to ensure that you do not make the same mistakes and lose out on easy marks. We're going to go through five questions, and I'm going to show you the questions first, so you can pause the video and answer them first. Before I go through the answers, you should aim to solve all five questions within approximately four minutes. Now, just before I begin, I just want to let you know that there is a free downloadable summary of the concepts that we're going to be discussing in this video available for download. So I'm going to look it in the description below. So make sure you check it out and uh, we'll begin the video. So here uh, is the set of questions and I want you to pause the video and sort of just answer the questions first. Now, this first question here is a uh, the diagram. The diagram shows a plant cell in which labeled plant of the cell is sugar made. Now, the correct answer was B, and a lot of people got that correct. Uh, chloroplast is, of course, the site of photosynthesis, which produces glucose, and that is a sugar. A lot of people incorrectly uh, answered with A which was uh, the vacuole, and uh, I think the misconception comes from the fact that vacuole is the site of storage of sugar, but it's certainly not where it's made. Uh, chloroplast here, therefore, was the real answer. So the second question, which part of a plant root here is partially permeable? And this really just goes down to your knowledge of basic cell structures and functions. The correct answer was B. Um, which a lot of people got correct, uh, but a lot of people also opted for the cell wall. Remember, the cell wall is the feature that's only present in plant cells, and uh, it is a fully permeable wall that gives the structural support for a plant cell, whereas the cell surface membrane is present in every single cell, uh, whether it's an animal cell or a plant cell, and it is indeed partially permeable. It allows some particles or molecules through and it prevents others from coming in and out. Uh, so answer was B. An experiment was carried out to investigate the effect of pH on enzyme action. The graph shows the result. Here again, uh, there was a little bit of confusion. The correct answer was A. Uh, you've got the y-axis being the rate of reaction and you've got the x-axis being the pH. Um, a lot of people were aware that it was pH and rate of reaction, but uh, some people got it the other way around and uh, incorrectly answered with C. And, uh, you know, this is a typical pH slash uh, rate of reaction graph because you've got the optimum pH that sort of peaks around here. And you've got the two points over here that uh, because the pH deviates too far from the optimum pH, which is around the middle here, the enzymes denature. And uh, so those are things that you should be aware of. Okay, so here, uh, the fourth question, the diagram shows a part of a section through a plant stem, which tissue supports water from, oh, sorry, transports water from the roots to the leaves. Okay, so um, you, this, this question is about your understanding of the structures of, or the transverse section through a plant stem. And so specifically regarding xylem vessels and phloem vessels, you do need to know what it looks like structurally uh, in a root, in a stem, and in a leaf. And uh, speaking of that, the answer in this case was C, which is the xylem. And this just boils down to your basic knowledge of understanding that uh, the in a stem, the most inner one is the xylem, and the outer one is the phloem. And of course, this whole thing is called the vascular bundle. As we talk about the xylem and phloem, this is a snapshot of the ebook that I'm working on at the moment. It's a condensed summary of everything that you need to know, you need to know for your course. It will eventually be available on my website, uh, which I will link in the description below when it is ready. Um, and this last question, which row describes anaerobic respiration? Uh, the correct answer here was a. And so this, not a lot of people got correct. Uh, the main misconception here was that the energy released in anaerobic respiration, a lot of people thought that a lot of energy was released, and that simply isn't correct. If you were to speak relatively, 
right? Anaerobic respiration is the type of respiration that does not require oxygen um, and produces lactic acid in humans, whereas aerobic respiration is the type of respiration that creates energy uh, by using oxygen. Um, and so comparatively, respiration aerobically releases a lot more energy than anaerobic respiration, which is why aerobic respiration is much more preferred. So here the answer was A, little energy is released uh, with presence or absence of oxygen and uh, waste products being lactic acid. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to link, uh, sorry, like, share and subscribe as it really does help the channel grow. And I will see you in the next video.